Thank you for your welcome. Uh, welcome to those who are watching rather than being present. Uh, we trust that you will feel that you are part of us this morning as we worship God. A very brief introduction of myself. Uh, the name's Godfrey Nicholson, a supernumerary minister who moved to the circuit last September. I've come all the way from sunny Leeds. Uh, I spent uh, 11 years in the circuit there. Uh, my wife is a lot younger than me, which is very brave of her to take me on. Uh, she wanted to continue working as a teaching assistant in the school that she was at. By moving to Murfield, we were able to do that. We have two children, a daughter uh, who's uh, a nurse in York and a son who is a first year student at Sheffield University. Before coming into the ministry, I taught mathematics at a boys boarding school, but I will try to spare you that. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises, for God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. Our opening hymn this morning is the hymn, At the Name of Jesus, Every Knee Shall Bow.
Let us pray. God our Father, as we meet in the name and in the presence and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we rejoice to trace that journey he took, humbling himself to become one of us, entering this world in such humility, in such shameful circumstances, living that life of perfect holiness and obedience, of giving glory to you in all that he was, all that he did and all that he said. Facing temptation, tempted at every point like we are, yet without sin. Despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Forsaken, betrayed, denied, crucified bearing our sins in his own body on the tree. Bearing those things of which we are ashamed. Bearing those things of which we ought to be ashamed. Those things that weigh on our conscience. And those things that we are so insensitive that we don't even notice them. But we rejoice that you raised him from the dead. That he is beyond the touch of death. He lives forevermore. And at this season we celebrate that he was taken up in and received into glory, exalted to your right hand, to his proper place. And we sing and we celebrate, we rejoice. And pray that as we share in the fellowship of worship this morning, that we may in our hearts enthrone him. We may give to him the glory that is rightly his. We may celebrate all that he is, and all that he promises to those who love him. Come amongst us as we worship. Be the centre, be the focus, be the purpose for our gathering together. And as we leave, may we do so with hearts ablaze, hearts full of joy and the assurance that he is with us now and always. So may our worship, so may our fellowship, so may our praying, so may our listening to your word draw us close to you for the honour and glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have two Bible readings, unconventionally, they're both from the New Testament, from St. John's Gospel, and then from the Acts of the Apostles. 17, verses 6 to 19. This passage is taken from the account of Jesus' last words to his disciples at the supper before his arrest. And he prays, those he will shortly leave through his passion. There are echoes of the Lord's Prayer in Jesus' address to God as Father and his prayer for protection from worldly powers of hatred and evil. It is as if Jesus looks for the coming of God's kingdom in the unity joy and faithfulness of his disciples. And so he prays, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. 
you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. And all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave to me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture might be fulfilled. I am coming to you now. But I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have full measure of my joy within them. I have given you them your word and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth, for your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Amen. Acts 1, verses 1 to 11. Jesus taken up into heaven. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostle he has chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proof that he was alive. He appears to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of, wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, for, for John baptized with water, but in a few days we will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Syria, and to the end of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and the cloud hid him him from their sight. 
they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who had been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. We'll come to those portions of scripture in a moment. At first we have the hymn, uh, Rejoice, the Lord is King. May your word be a lamp to our feet, a light to our pathway. May it draw us to the Lord Jesus in worship, in love and trust. For his name's sake. Amen. There is a church on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, which is called the Church of the Ascension. If you go there, they will show you what they claim are the last footprints left by Jesus as he ascended to heaven. Believe it as you will. Some people uh, speculate what would have happened if we had been able to fly above the clouds that received Jesus. 
Again, I think it's a, a, an exercise in silliness to ask that question. Perhaps others speculate, well, now that we've got these wonderful telescopes, and while we've got these wonderful rockets and, and satellites, could we perceive Jesus far away in some distant galaxy? Again, I, I hope that it's self-evident nonsense. That's not what the Ascension is about. Ascension Day was last Thursday. I remember uh, uh, somebody saying, perhaps we Methodists don't do much about Ascension Tide because it happened on a Thursday. And ever since I heard that, I have tried to make it my business on this particular Sunday to focus on the Ascension. What's it all about? What's going on? What's it trying to say to us? Forget those absurd questions that people have sometimes asked. Because there is something much more significant going on. The ascension marks the border, that transition point between one state and another. We've heard so much over the last year or two about soft borders and hard borders and what they symbolise. There is a border here in the ascension that marks a significant transition. We are at that border between the spiritual and the physical realms as Jesus passes from one to the other. Just as on at Christmas time we celebrate the Word made flesh, the Godhead taking on our humanity and shows in that moment uh, a respect and a dignity that belongs to the human body. Yours, mine, our neighbours, those who we meet. So too the Ascension says that the physical actually counts for something important. The resurrection of Jesus was physical. They were able to touch his hands. They were able to put fingers in the nail prints, a fist in his side. They watched as he ate. But his resurrection was more than physical. Sometimes he appeared and disappeared. Uh, can't help thinking of the, the, the Cheshire Cat in Alice. Well, it was Jesus appearing and disappearing a bit like that. I'm not sure what it was. But it's a reminder that the life needed to be expressed in a physical body. Just as you can't have music without the instrument, so you can't have life without the body. It's there on Easter morning, as Jesus says to Mary in the garden, don't cling to me, don't try to hold on to me. Though the physical is important, it's not at all important. And he is received into the cloud. The cloud received him, a cloud to... The cloud was a symbol of God's presence. It was there in the Exodus as the, the, the pillar of cloud led the people of Israel as a symbol of God's presence and of God's leading. So the cloud receives Jesus as a sign of his receive, being received into God's presence. When the temple was dedicated, the people, the cloud filled the temple so that the priests couldn't see to minister. It was a sign of that God owned that place and the sign that God owned the place where Jesus had gone. It was there on the Mount of Transfiguration as Jesus talked with, with, Peter, with, with uh, Moses and Elijah uh, and Peter, you could predict it would be Peter, couldn't you? Said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's build some memorial. As, uh, somebody uh, I studied with said, it's like, you know, Peter's got to say something uh, like we would say, let's put the kettle on. 
there, there's something of that going on in Peter's mind. We've got to do something. And then the cloud descends and the voice out of the cloud says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And when eventually the cloud lifts, there's only Jesus there. This one is my beloved son. And the cloud receives Jesus, the beloved son. And Jesus is received into the presence of God because that sacrifice that he made on the cross has been accepted. It has achieved all it set out to achieve. It has brought forgiveness for those who trust in him. It has brought acceptance by God to those who yield to him. It has brought cleansing from sin for those who see their sin led him to the cross. But it also says that his person is vindicated. He dies not as a, a, a guilty sinner, but as an innocent victim, a true sacrifice. And his person is vindicated in this act that receives him back into the holy presence of God. And we are at that border between the spiritual and the physical that says that that borderline is far less significant than we normally give it credit for. We're at that border where the coming of the Holy Spirit is anticipated. He told them to wait for the promise of the Father. You heard me say, John baptised with water, but you'll be baptised with the Holy Spirit. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Have you ever paused over those words that Jesus spoke in St John's Gospel? It is to your advantage that I go away. And if you wanted to say it, but... How could it possibly be to their advantage that Jesus was physically removed from them? And he says, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come to you. It's to your advantage that I go away. You'll bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. I love a saying of uh, Archbishop William Temple, who said, it's no use giving me a play like Hamlet or King Lear, telling me to write plays like that. Shakespeare could do it, but I can't. And it's no use showing me a life like the life of Jesus of Nazareth and telling me to live like that. Jesus could do it, but I cannot. But he said, if the genius that was in Shakespeare could live in me, I could write plays like that. And if the Holy Spirit who was in Jesus lives in me, then I can live like that. coming of the Holy Spirit is anticipated at this border. Jesus goes in order that the Spirit may descend on you and me and on the whole of his church. It would be an act of criminal lunacy if that isn't told you next Sunday. <laughs> and we're at that border where his final return is assured. While they were gazing into heaven as he went, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Why do you stand looking into heaven? Why are you standing there gawping? This Jesus, who has taken him from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. In this moment, we anticipate that moment when the prayer of God's people through the ages, your kingdom come will finally be answered. When he will return, not as a babe in Bethlehem, not as a man nailed to a cross, but as the king in all his splendour and all his glory. He will return and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. At the moment when he cried out from the cross, it is finished. The veil in the temple was torn in two. The access to the holiest place was thrown wide open. And a day will come 
when the heavens are torn apart and the king will be revealed in his majesty. You go to the theatre, you wait for that moment of curtain up. Well, my Christian friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, we wait for curtain up. We wait for that moment when he's revealed in his splendour. When he, his glory is displayed. When his righteousness is declared. When his justice is exercised. When his worship is offered. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. Join in the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. He was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, exalted to the right hand of the Father, where you ever live and intercede for us, we bring our prayers in your name, our prayers, our cares, our concerns for some of the big events in the life of the world and some of those concerns that lie close to our hearts. We think of the conflict in the land where you walked. Where the Prince of Peace once spoke words of grace and love, of hope and life. And where now people aim rockets at one another. Destroy homes. Kill lives. Where words of hostility and anger are thrown quite casually, quite indifferently, totally provocatively. We pray that those who hold power in that region may take a step back may recognise that what was said once remains true that those who live by the sword will perish by the sword that those who throw stones will perish by stones that those who dispatch rockets and missiles will perish by them As we see the stream of refugees crossing the Mediterranean. As we've seen them over previous years. We pray for those places from which they fled. Those places where they felt so insecure that they take these desperate measures. We pray for those people who exploit them, demanding high prices and putting them in dangerous situations. For those places that struggle to accommodate them, to provide them with shelter, with food, with employment. the end of Christian Aid Week, we pray for the work of Christian Aid. The difficulties of fundraising in the present circumstances, addressing a, a world that is so desperately needy. 
places where COVID is rampant, it's got out of control. Places where the pressing issue is not of disease but of famine or water shortage. Or Christian Aid and other relief organisations. That you will bless their work. You will provide them with the resources that are needed to meet a desperate need. We pray for this country as tomorrow we enter a, a more relaxed set of conditions in confronting COVID. Pray that people may exercise wisdom and caution. Pray that as we are not yet clear that those who are still occupied in the front line, the health professionals, doctors, pharmacists, nurses, researchers, distributors, that they may be agents of yours in bringing hope, in bringing healing, Pray that those who are tempted to abandon all restraint may recognise their responsibilities to those around them, to those who are most vulnerable, to those who are most needy. We pray for this circuit, for its ministry, for its fellowship, for its sense of belonging not just to a local church, but to the wider church, the whole people of God. Pray for the circuit leadership team as they face some quite challenging decisions over the next few months. For the ministers moving on one who's moving in. For the whole people of God who form the priesthood of all believers, who, anointed by the Holy Spirit, are witnesses to Jesus Christ. We're asked to pray today, particularly in the life of this fellowship, for Norman, who is so seriously ill. For Margaret Gardner, back in hospital. For Shirley Hurd. For Nolene and her family. God of grace, of love, of mercy, who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Draw near to these. Be their help, be their strength, be their peace, be their joy, we pray. As we bring our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
Our closing hymn is one that's new to us in uh, singing the faith, but is sung to a well-known tune. It's the hymn we sing the praise of Jesus, of our ascending Lord, the triumph of our Saviour, of Christ the Son of God. for Ascension Day. Eternal and gracious God, grant that as we believe your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to have ascended with triumph into your kingdom in heaven, so may we also in heart and mind ascend to where he is and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We shall make our offerings as we leave. And Father, we offer our gifts, we offer our love, we offer our praise, we offer our life and service to you for your blessing, for your kingdom's sake, in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen.